the world is in crisis. And people are looking for hope and answers. <laughs> Thai PBS World is there with you with the best minds of the day. Join us on Thai PBS World tonight, every weekdays at 7 p.m. Thai PBS World, we bring Thailand to the world. Swadika and very good evening and welcome to Thai PBS World Tonight. I'm Nat Bunag. I'm Tulip Nat Sompopla. We'll begin tonight with the news of His Majesty the King who asked the people to unite in love for the country during his visit to Ubon Rashatani province. His Majesty the King of Thailand told his subjects during a visit to a temple in the northeastern province of Ubon Rashatani yesterday that Thai people must be close together in love for the country. Smiling, His Majesty made the remark in response to repeated cheers of Long Live the King and the King Fights On from many well-wishers who showed up to greet him at Wat Nong Pa Phom. The king also repeatedly thanked the cheering crowd as the royal couple strolled among those who lined a path in the temple compound after the Gatin ceremony. Their majesties, the king and the queen, visited the temple in Nonpun sub-district in Warin Chamrap district to perform the ceremony by presenting saffron robes to monks. Meanwhile, in the northeastern province of Buriram, thousands of people from 23 districts, mostly wearing yellow shirts and waving the Thai flag, rallied in the Mueng district's town square, where the statue of King Rama I is located to show their support for the monarchy. And now we're going to go to the news about the anti-government protester. There are three locations today. The main one is at Silom Road, right. which they call it the Red Carpet Art Exhibition. So let's take a look at the... This is just about an hour ago. This is atmosphere there. There's some uh, students walk on the carpet. And if you go there, if you want to see what's going on. There will be a lot of drawings and paintings. There are some uh, musicians, some kind of art installations and face painting and a lot of things. So that's the biggest uh, demonstration of today. It and start off since around 5 p.m. Right, and it's like a, a runway theme and the concept of this demonstration is that this runway is everyone's runway, so all the demonstrators can just walk on the red carpet and just, and just sh show their style and their, their stand on the anti-government protest. So on the another location, it's in Bangna. That one, I would say, a little more traditional. It's across from the Nation Bangna office. The nation is the um, news agency that the protesters feel like they are taking side with the government too much. Right. And they want to go there in protest of the nation. But uh, because they have, as you can see, there is a sign in front of the building said it's a personal property and no trespassing. So the protesters decide to stay across the street and they have some stage set up, they have speaker truck, and there are people gathering, listen, gathering listening to somebody talking on the stage. Reportedly, the truck the protester use is the one with the brand Truth Today. Truth Today is the name of the TV program ran by Red Church many, many years back. So it's not a super big crowd, but uh, reportedly more people are joining as we speaking now. And for today, there are four protest sites. And as we mentioned earlier, there's Silom area with the runway theme, the across the opposite of Nation Bangna office. There's another one at Skywalk MBK, and there and outside of Bangkok, there's a protest at Konkan University as well. What you see right now is from the skywalk in front of the MBK department store over the Patum One intersection. That happened at 6 p.m. Most of them refused to stand up to the national anthem and then they raised their three finger salute. They said in the protest of the uh, violence 
against a student in Ayutthaya province. What happened was there was a student that didn't stand up to the national anthem, and then there is just another person from uh, across the platform at the train station walk across a train track and slap her on the face and pull her hair because she was angry that this student didn't stand up for the national anthem. And, so, late, yep. and later on, the family of the student actually explained later on that she only had a stomach ache because she had some sort of period cramp. So that was why she could not stand up. And 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 when someone has a period, we 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 feel like. We if, cannot stand up. If you were sick, you were sick. You know, I don't think people need to really explain themselves. Anyway, uh, slap across the face and pulling hairs, it's something that kind of, not kind of, it's actually violence and something you should not do to other people. Definitely. So these and kids are protesting the whatever happened in uh, Ayutthaya province. And what you see now is uh, Ami Bottom Blue. He was arrested earlier. He was in jail for a number of days. So right now, what you see is when he was telling the Crown about his experience in the prison or when he was arrested. And he is actually one of the protest leaders that we've seen throughout the previous rallies and this time around he came to share his experience what is it like being in prison and now he's actually back talking to the anti-government protesters today. But I would say all in all, all the three locations in Bangkok today look quite peaceful and only one of them got permit to do so but the police said that their job is to make sure that everybody is safe and to also provide uh, accommodation to the motorists like in Bangna area that uh, that one lane of the Bangna Drive Road was closed. The outbound lane on that area uh, is closed. So the car is still able to pass by. And in related news today, the former leader of Future Forward Party, Tanaton Jing Rungrungkit, as well as four other members have been indicted for the Skywalk rally last year. The Patumwan District Court is to try three core leaders of Thailand's progressive movement, leader of the Gaokai Party and another party member in connection with a flash mob which took place at the Bangkok Arts and Culture Center on December 14, 2019. The five, few, the five former Future Four Party members, Thanathon Jing Rung Rung Kit, Piyaput Sang Kadokun and Panika Wanit, who are core members of the progressive movement, as well as Gao Klai party leader Pitha Lim Jaren Rat and Payaracho Chantrakajon, were in indicted this morning by public prosecutors for violating the Public Assembly Act by organizing the protest at the Patumwan Skywalk in front of the Bangkok Arts and Culture Center. They were summoned to the prosecutor's office to acknowledge charges of illegal public assembly using a loudspeaker without permission, obstruction of public access to and from the SkyTrain system, and rallying within a 150-meter radius of the palace. The five have denied all the charges so far and vowed to fight the cases in court. And the court set the first hearing for this case on December 22nd. On another side of the story today, the Prime Minister was chairing the police commission and when the meeting finished, he came out and gave a press briefing and he was talking about how the police didn't want to charge anyone, but if they violate the law, the police has to. And he said that he urged the people to respect the laws and not to make the country more divisive. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha held a press conference. He said that the importance of ensuring safety for the people. He reiterated the police now how they perform their duty, their job is to ensure the fairness among all sides. And it is the responsibility of the government, the prime minister, the administration and everyone that has to cooperate with each other to make the country safe and able to move forward. 
The Prime Minister explained that ensuring safety includes being cautious with their actions. Let's take a listen at some part of the, of the press briefing. การสิ่งที่ปฏิสูจน์ที่ทําให้เกิดความปลอดภัยได้ก็คือเราก็ต้องเอ่อระมัดระวังเรื่องของการการกระทําใดๆที่จะต้องไว้ไปต่อเจต
some, some of them, the staff and the environment also does not meet the standard. We're talking about something like there's no chair in the shower room in case the seniors slip and fall. There's no emergency button or the leak ceiling, for instance. So based on the review, the Office of the Auditor General suggested agencies to focus on improving the quality of life for the elders as well as urging local administrative offices to review the eligibility of those who can receive elderly living allowances to be in accordance with the guidelines. The Office of the Auditor General also urged local administrative offices to improve the online database on the living allowances for the elders. As we're entering the aging society, all these facilities need to be up to standard so that the quality of living of these elders are much better in Thailand. And just so you know, these are the stories we've also been following today. Thailand recorded four new cases of COVID-19 today, who returned from Japan, the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait. All of them are now under state quarantine. The new cases brought the total number of infections to 3,763, with nine new recoveries and no new fatalities. The Ministry of Public Health is considering adjustments to the COVID-19 preventive measures at more than 100 hotels under the alternative state quarantine program, as well as any use of common facilities by those in quarantine at such locations. The move is to avoid a repeat of an incident in Samutprakan province, where coronavirus was found on fitness equipment, and three people staying there, including a French tourist, were found to be infected. The State Railway of Thailand signed a 50 billion baht contract with China Railway International Company for the installation of rail, electrical systems and procurement of train carriages for the Thai Chinese high-speed train project linking Bangkok with Thailand's northeastern province of Nong Khai. The project is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, which will see the linkage of railway systems in Thailand through Laos then to China. The high-speed train between Bangkok and Nong Khai is expected to start operations in 2025. Now let's take a look at something a little lighter. Usually when you see people selling something online, yep. when they do live streaming, you will see some pretty faces, nice makeup, uh, some K-pop culture style. Yep. But today we have a report for you for something totally opposite. Let's take a look. All the clothes belong to deceased people who died from different causes, says Kanitha Thongnak, who sell clothes online with zombie makeup. When it comes to Halloween, besides lots of people dressing up as ghosts, several shops use it as a marketing theme and Kanita is just one example. She first got the idea while attending a funeral when she saw clothes of the deceased being burned in accordance with tradition. Then she learned the makeup skills on the internet and now sells clothing for anything up to 100 baht. ไปงานศพแล้วทีเนี้ยก็คือเห็นสภาพของคนที่เสียชีวิตอ่ะคือมันเยอะมากเราคิดว่ามันน่าจะเกิดประโยชน์มากกว่าการที่เราไปเผา
แล้วก็บางคนก็คือไม่เอาเสื้อผ้าไปโดยการที่โอนเงินมาให้แต่เอาเงินฝากทําบุญจะเป็นอย่างเงี้ยค่ะส่วนเรื่องคอมเมนต์ก็จะมีมั่งที่เขาบอกว่าหลอนทําไมถึงกล้าเอามาขายอะไรเงี้ยก็มีมีอยู่ค่ะคณิตา sources the clothing from undertakers after monks have prayed for the dead she donates part of her income to Buddhist temples while some customers get scared there's one customer who's a loyal fan เคยซื้อมาซื้อมาใส่ใส่อยู่นี่ก็ซื้อเข้ามาแฟนเขาก็ไปซื้อมาใส่ก็เขาก็ไม่ไอที่ว่าเสื้อผ้าที่เขาเขาตายจริงอ่ะเขาก็ไม่ได้เอามาขายอ่ะเขาเอาที่ว่าเสื้อผ้าผีที่ว่าเขาไม่ได้ใส่แล้วเนี่ยเอามาขายก็เอามาใส่กันไม่ถือไม่ถือทำไมไม่ถือเหมือนเสื้อผ้าธรรมดาเหมือนเสื้อผ้าธรรมดาพระเขาบอกว่าเอาไปเผาไฟทิ้งก็ไม่ไม่ได้อะไรเอามาขายก็ยังได้เงินตัวละเท่าไหร่ก็ยังมีคุณค่าพระเขาว่าคณิตา also sells handmade scary items including zombie dolls and she finds some people are much keener than others she said it depends on the customer if they want to buy they will buy it and they don't get scared This is something perfect for Halloween, and yes. it's only a couple of days away. And I would say it's a very creative way of make an honest living. And we don't really see any of the online retailers doing spooky makeup and then selling dead people's clothes. And this is something very different, and it definitely, it really. Go What I was gonna say? It's more like the customers who are usually into like Thai movies that are usually horror movies, and that is definitely a good marketing tool to cater to <laughs> these to these people who like spooky movies. It's a well. whole concept. It's a whole concept, and that's all we have for you in this edition of Thai PBS Thai PBS World tonight. Thank you for watching. สวัสดีค่ะ